Hey, what's going on everybody? So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the carbonized Scout Trooper. So when this little carbonized wave went up on Target's website at first, which was what, last summer, last, I don't know, sometime last year, I was not super interested in it at first. I was like, nah, I'll pass, especially when I saw the $36.99 price tag on Paz Vizsla. I mean, it's a shiny repaint of a figure that I already have. So I was like, nah, I'll pass on that one. The Scarif Trooper, it looks cool, but you know, the regular Scarif Trooper is that flat tan color. That one is super shiny, super gold. I thought it might look a little funny on the shelf, so I said, no, I'm not gonna get that one either. And the, you know, Scout Trooper, it's like, no, I'll just wait. I'll just wait. If I see it in the store, maybe. And that's exactly, you know, why we're here, because I was at Target today and they had all three. And I was looking at them and they do look cool. But I got to this one and I was really looking at it and I was like, oh, this thing actually looks pretty good. So here we are. And as you can see, it comes in the galaxy style packaging. Got Star Wars, the black series up top, nice big window. You can see the figure and he comes with his EC-17 blaster pistol or EC-17 holdout blaster or flash pistol or just scout trooper blaster, you know, whatever you want to call it. It's a cute little thing. And then you got the little carbonized you know, logo there, Star Wars, the Mandalorian and Scout Trooper. On this side of the box, the front window wraps around and then down here you have Star Wars, the Black Series in this nice shiny silver color, I like that. And there's the side with the artwork, beautiful picture. I mean, it's so shiny, it's just reflecting everything, but <laughs> good looking picture. There's the little arch on Navarro, great. I mean, yeah, what a cool picture. And of course, there's a small window on the top of the box and on the bottom, barcode and a bunch of mouse print that no one reads. And there's the back of the box. Same picture as the side. You got a short bio in various languages. This one is not numbered because it's part of this little carbonized wave. So it's not numbered. And then you got some more stuff that no one reads. And since we're here, I'll just read the bio real quick. It just says, Scout Troopers were trained for more independence and adaptability than most Imperial troops. The Empire used Scout Troopers for a range of missions, including reconnaissance and infiltration. All right, I'm gonna get this carbonized Scout Trooper open and let's take a look at it. All right, so here is the carbonized Scout Trooper out of the box, and let's just take a look at him. I mean, he's, he's just like the other Scout Troopers. He's just shiny, but let's just see what they did up here. So I think the detail in here is pretty good. Now, compared to the other Scout Troopers, there's some lines up here that are on the Archive and on the Jedi Fallen Order, whereas they're not on this one, you know, some lines there and some lines up here. And they're also not on the one that came with the bike and Grogu. So slight difference there, but I think the detail in here looks pretty good. I mean, the rest of the armor, you know, it's a little dirty right there, but it's the undersuit that's, that stands out, you know, being shiny. The armor doesn't look overly shiny. It's really just this undersuit. But I think the shininess kind of brings out more detail. You know, you can really see the wrinkles more the texturing on the strap holding on this armor pad. You can see that better. All the just fine details really pop on this figure, you know, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, the gloves, all this back here, the pants in particular. I mean, great texturing back here, all this, some dirtiness back here. Got a little bit of silver there, some silver back here. It's just, yeah, it's a, it's a scout trooper, you know, from the from the waist down. I mean, it's pretty much just like the others, but the detail on the undersuit really pops. I mean, all this texturing here, gloves, yeah, it's a pretty cool figure. I mean, it's way better than I thought it would be. You know, this one isn't overly shiny. The undersuit is, but the armor, it's not that bad. And I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. I mean, you guys have seen the scout trooper before. You know what it looks like. I'm just kind of highlighting the, you know, just certain parts of it. The dirtiness right here is okay. It's fine. I got a little bit on these pouches. All this in here is pretty good. Got a little bit of, you know, some dirtiness back here, there. Yeah, that's a nice close-up of this figure. Like I said, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time just showing you the figure because you guys know what it looks like. But I am digging how all the detail just comes out on the undersuit with this, you know, shiny finish. Yeah, I kind of like this. And if I put the carbonized one with some other scout troopers, I don't think it looks bad. I mean, yes, the undersuit is shinier, but the sheen of the armor, it's not bad at all, I don't think. I mean, there's the one that came with the, the bike and Grogu. He's, of course, the dirtiest. The 
carbonized. Jedi Fallen Order, of course, has all this extra stuff that goes with the Electro Staff. I think this is my favorite, actually. And then that's the archive release. And like I mentioned, you can see the, the black lines above the nose and above the eyes here and here, right? So they're not on the carbonized or on the speeder bike one that came with Grogu. And since this is the exact same figure as the other ones, I'm not going to spend too much time on articulation, but I just want to highlight some things. So he's got some really good side to side at the head. He's got some pretty amazing down and he's got some really good up, but there's not a whole lot in the way of tilt. But yeah, the up and down is pretty incredible. You know, but the arms, you're kind of limited. This armor runs into the suit, so the arms don't go up all that far. But where this figure really shines is these double elbows that you can do that with. I mean, that <laughs> there's only a handful of figures that I think can do this. There aren't many. This, this is pretty incredible. But you know, as far as swivel, it's an upper bicep swivel, the wrist swivels, and he has a really, really nice up and down hinge on the right. I mean, that is some crazy movement. So yeah, I really, really like that a lot. And the left arm is exactly the same. And the left hand also has an up and down hinge that has some crazy range. I mean, that is pretty impressive. You have just a hair of swivel, nothing in the way of crunch, and he goes back to just there. And of course the legs are the same. Swivel, you know, they go up to there. Of course they go up in a V. Um, double knees that get all the way up, and you got some really nice down at the feet, some pretty good up at the feet, and of course you have the swivel at the ankle. So yeah, this trooper's got some really, really good articulation. And as far as accessories, there is the teeny tiny EC-17 blaster. It is, it's so little, but this is such a cool little weapon. It's got some great fine details. I mean, nice sculpt, got a little scope on the side there, some nice texturing on the grip, and of course the huge trigger guard. And there's the other side, just more the same, but this is a really, really cool blaster that is basically vacuum cleaner bait, so be careful, but I love this pistol. And as far as him holding it, this thing is so tiny, and the, the middle finger and the index finger will go through the trigger guard, all right? So two fingers will go through there. But he holds that very well. There's no chance of that coming out. And, um, you know, just kind of firing straight out. I mean, that looks fine, you know? And of course, you can get the pistol way up here next to his head if you utilize the second joint, the one that's yeah, above the elbow. And this one, I mean, you can do this. I mean, not too many figures can do that. I mean, get the pistol all the way up there like that. That's pretty incredible. Some great elbows, but you know, firing low from the hip, I think looks pretty good. You can really fire low from the hip if you tip the wrist up. You can do this, you know, kind of cowboy style. <laughs> you know, even though the holster's down here, he can do that with this crazy wrist hinge. Of course, he can look silly. You know, firing like that, maybe firing over a, you know, some cover, you know. <laughs> Pretty cool little blaster, and I think he holds that very well. And the left hand is also sculpted to hold this blaster, which is pretty cool. I mean, if you had an extra one of these, he can dual wield. Pretty nice. Um, it's just as stable in the left hand. And, of course, you have the same movement on the left. I mean, crazy wrist hinge, you know, can fire low from the hip like that. Can, uh, uh, this left one's really tight. But, you know, just kind of straight out firing. Turn the head off to the side. I mean, that looks fine. You know, it's cool that they gave him uh, trigger fingers or, you know, kind of a dual trigger finger because both the, the middle finger and the index finger go through there. It's kind of nice that they did that for both hands. But, yeah, he does hold that well in the left side. And as far as weapon storage, he has this almost like just half a holster on, the, on his boot. It barely sits in there. Um... It's kind of stable. I, mean, I can shake the thing. It's not just going to fall out, but it does barely sit in there. So be careful. Um, but I think that looks good in its holster. And let's bring these four up again. I mean, I just want to just say again, this guy looks really good with, you know, with other troopers. And that's what he looks like on the shelf. You know, just like I mentioned, I think he looks really good with other troopers. You know, the fact that he's not overly shiny. You know, the sheen of the armor actually goes pretty well, you know, especially when he's kind of close to the one that's on the bike. I mean, he really doesn't look bad. But I think with these other troopers, I think I'm just going to leave him here you know, for right now. I think it looks great. You know, the scout trooper and then just some, you know, stormtrooper variants. Um, but yeah, I like this guy. I'm actually really happy I picked this thing up. So yeah, pretty cool figure. You know, this being my first 
Carbonized figure. I'm I'm glad I went with this. I mean, this Scout Trooper is one of my favorite Trooper designs, but this undersuit, all the detail, it's just fantastic. You know, the fact that you can see it more on this one versus just a standard black undersuit. I'm just really, really just digging this. The colors back here are nice, the silver, some silver there. You know, this is the same pretty much. Silver, silver. I still kind of wish they would have painted the lines here and up here, but it's okay. I think the detail on the little mouthpiece here, I think is nice on this one. You know, because this kind of varies between the Scout Troopers, but this looks good. But yeah, I think overall, pretty nice figure. Super happy I grabbed it, but I want to hear from you guys. So please comment below and let me know what you think of the carbonized Scout Trooper from The Mandalorian. And if you like videos on Star Wars The Black Series, please consider dropping a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and please turn on notifications. I'd certainly appreciate it, and I thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.